little tale-tellers, welcome to book two, Suzuki Cello. I can't believe we're already on book two, this is amazing. We're so, so advanced already, we haven't been playing very long. I feel really quite smug about it. If I was you, I'd congratulate yourselves and give yourself a big tap on the back, because getting through all of book one was no mean feat. But if you haven't done book one, all of the podcasts are uh, sort of in order, more or less, and you can just go back and retrace the steps that um, myself and the other little mini tale tellers have been uh, crossing over the last few months, actually. I think it's taken us about two months. Um, or if not, you can just jump in now, because if you already have a little bit of a clue about fingering of the cello and where to, what first position is and things like that, then you don't need to do book one. Um, we can jump straight into book two. We are going to start looking at second position, though, in this book. So you, you're going to need your wits about you somewhat. And we're also um, starting to think a bit more about tonalisation and what that means um, in terms of the cello is hitting the right note and hearing ringing sounds. And we're going to be doing the ringing sound tonalisation tomorrow morning, bright and early. For now, we're just going to do the first exercise of tonalisation in Suzuki Book 2, OK? So let's have a little look at it. Each lesson should begin with tonalisation. Try to produce a beautiful tone. Use full bows. OK, we can do that. We can do that, can't we? We don't need too much practice with that because we've been doing lots of that. Why do you think they ask us to do that? Well, I'll tell you. Learning to manage the bow beautifully with a light, smooth touch really um, takes... It, it becomes second nature when you're used to doing these very, very long bows. And you, you just... You don't have to push in, no pushing in, no pressing hard. Just really relaxed. Really gentle. Um, don't forget to come round as you're, you know, always try and look in the mirror if you've got a mirror. It really would help you with your icky screechy. Um, and, the, and the slower you go, you know, I could, I could sing the national anthem while I do this in the key of C, obviously. The slower you go, the better you become at controlling. But you see, you don't want to be thinking too hard about it. You want it to become second nature. And that's why we do these exercises at the start of each lesson. So we'll go over this now. And you can use the tonalisation exercises to prepare, not just for your ear, but also for the way that you uh, differentiate between your strings and the way that you um, uh, glide Glide. We're going to be looking at gliding today. So first things first. What have we got here? We've got common time. It's four four time. We've got lots of um, minimums. We're, go we're going to spend a count of two on each note. So one two three four. One two three four, etc. Except for the end, we've got a dotted one, and um, we're going to we're going to count that for three, and then we've got look a rest there, a squiggly bird. I, I like to think of that as a seagull trying to get my chips. That's what I always think when I see that one beat rest. Um, so, uh, I think, should we just start? Let's just pop our hands up ready into first position. Mmm, the taster, the taster. Now look, you'll notice we've got a four, 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 four. What's that about? Four, 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 four. Now you could, if you wanted, put your finger across. But I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask you to actually move your fingers across. And the reason I'm asking that is so that you really understand where the axis lies. The axis is the line on which all these notes occur. Because if you look at your cello, it's not dead straight, is it? With with it's not completely vertical. 
perpendicular with the with um, the horizon it's sloping a bit so that it can get over your left shoulder do you see I mean, this is quite interesting isn't it do you know what i'm just going to turn the i'm going to pause this a minute no we're okay i turned the volume up earlier because i was reciting a story no i was doing a keep fit class i've started keep fit darlings musicians keep fit and um, I'd had to turn it up, but it obviously goes back down to normal when I restart. Anyway, so the reason I'm doing that is because you need to mentally prepare for this axis not being on a dead straight plane because your cello is not dead straight. You're actually going to come, effectively, the nearer you get to your chest minuscule millimetres are, are further down with your pinky. It's so minuscule you you don't you shouldn't have to think about it too much, but it is there. It is there, okay? You're because if you stay completely straight you're you're going to be flat by the time you get round, okay, to this C. And we don't want a flat C do we? That would be terrible. Um, so that's the fingering of the first one. And the fingering of the second one, what have we got? Oh, I love this second one. Let's do this one at a time. Let's pop on our C major. I've got Claire on um, the five-armed robot. One arm for violins, one for violas, one for... Uh, cellos, one for basses. Oh, two violins. Beg your pardon. First and seconds. So Claire's going to keep us in tune. So let's get ready with that. Let's find that C. And remember, a way to find the C that would be in tune is to, if you're not sure of it, play the big C, the big fat C, and then the, the fourth on the C next door. And if they sound in perfect harmony with one another, that's because they are. Okay, so C, full bow all the way down. Then pop across. And we've got a G all the way up. Pop across. And we've got a D. So the C, the G and the D are all on the same plane. And come back to that G and to the C. And do you see how you need to be a tiny little bit more stretched? But it's such a small amount. Nice and steady. So be a bit slower, okay? And then you've got that one beat rest. When you're doing this in, on your own, do that uh, at, nice and slowly, first of all, with, um, you don't have to use a metronome, but I, I'd advise that you do. And do it twice as a repeat there. And then, of course, you've got that three beat note at the end. Okay? Now the second one, Maintain the same volume and intensity throughout each bow stroke. So you don't want to be doing this. You want to be really steady, really smooth. The same volume. And there's never a reason to be loud when you're practicing. In fact, the, the musician who can play quietly is a better musician. Okay? It's all about control of the bow, isn't it? So let's get that to see again. And play the full bow down. And now the next strings are one. And this is our rather lovely E. Have you tilted your bow a little? And then four down, that rather lovely G. Keep the E where it is. Keep that first finger down. Keep it down even now. Play the C with the second. Keeping that E down. Keep the E down still. Play the fourth. The D. 
play the sea. Why do you think you've got your first finger still there? You'll find out in, in a second. G. And look, now you're playing that E again. And your finger was there all along. So th there's very little work to do. You play that twice and then you come over and you play that C. Okay? Isn't it lovely? Let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. 